there's five spots for the D-line. There's no specification on edge, nose tackle. So what I did, Rob, I have my top five, and I have others that I'm kind of honorable mention status that I, I might be willing to work in if you can persuade me. But I put two interior guys and three more end or edge guys. Um, not that that matters. If if I thought the five best were nose tackles, I probably would have done that. But that was kind of my philosophy going in, trying to get five defensive linemen. I went beef. Okay. I went a lot of interior. Okay. Uh, do you want to each have one that we just get on the defensive line since there's five and then kind of quibble over the final three? Let me see here. I – maybe if you pick a guy that – I've got five that I feel pretty strongly about. Okay. Dante Corleone. He's on my list. All right. He's mine. The godfather. The other one, I don't think you'll argue with me here. I have got paired with Dante Corleone on the interior, Jalen Hutchings. Everybody gets to see me struggle with Cincinnati. Made you type, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd be any better. Jalen Hutchings also on my list, and that's not a homer pick. Like you'll see, I don't pick a ton of Texas Tech guys, but he's very much earned that. His hype is widespread among a lot of people that cover college football. I think he's certainly one of the two or three best interior linemen in this conference. All right, so I have one more interior. Uh, it sounds like you have three. Um, edge rushers my final interior guys to Vondre sweat from texas he has played in 45 big 12 games he started nine games last year and that's just because hey what package are we starting in today he played a ton and was an absolute beast second team all big 12 last year he was not on my radar honorable mention i think actually he he was not on my radar i've got I've got three more that I had. Four, had. 355. Do what? He's 6'4", 355. Big boy. All right, so let me see if you have the other two that I have. Uh, Ethan Downs of Oklahoma. Do not have him. And then uh, Ricky Barber, UCF. Do not have him. I have somebody else from UCF. Okay, do you have the uh, the other edge rusher from UCF? I've got Tremont Morris, Be- Morris Brash from UCF. I, I'm in with him. So I think UCF deserves a player on there, and that's my player. I just kind of flipped the coin between those two. Yeah, let me pull up his stats real quick because it, it's impressive. And what I tried to do, Horse it was back. tough. Uh, yes. Uh, Tremont is the T-R-E-M-O-N, Morris Brash. Um, it's hard to judge guys that played an American Athletic Conference schedule last year. What I try to do is take maybe 75 or 80% of their stats and project that to the Big 12. But last year he had 52 tackles, 13 for a loss, six sacks. I think that would translate into all Big 12 numbers. He's a he's a four-year player. He's capitalizing on a COVID year, so a ton of snaps, ton of starts. I I feel good about him. I want to reference the, uh, the comments here. Tony Bradford is getting disrespected. What makes Hutchings better than Bradford? The stats. I mean, Bradford is very good. He's just a different type of player. Yeah. He's a no, he, he's a block eater. He does his job. He's very good. But Hutchings is a better interior defensive lineman than Tony Bradford is. Yeah, I think, yeah people that, you know, are semi-pro scouts would tell you that. PFF grades tell you that. Tony Bradford's a good player. A lot of really good players aren't going to make this list. I think Bradford would probably be on like a second team ballot for me. But if I had to choose one or the other, and if we're not going to put half of this roster as Texas Tech guys, which I don't think would be appropriate, then some tough decisions have to be made. Um, I would fight for Downs to be on the list. He was all Big 12 second team last year at 13 and a half tackles for loss, four and a half sacks, and nine hurries last season. Do you want to tell? Can I tell you the two guys I have remaining? Yes. I've got Baron Sorrell from Texas. Last year, 10 starts as a sophomore, nine and a half TFLs, five sacks. So I think pretty close to the stat line you just mentioned. And then I've got Colin Oliver from Oklahoma State, who 
had a little bit of a down year last year, but I think he was like freshman All American. Yes, Big Twelve um, freshman of the year in twenty twenty one. I have him at linebacker. See, I had him at linebacker initially, and then everywhere he's listed as defensive end. Is so he? I, I moved him to defensive line. I had him on my linebacker list initially, and I had to move. I had to bump somebody out of the D line because he's listed at defensive end everywhere that I've seen. Okay, I had him at linebacker, so I'm I'm down with Colin Oliver. Okay, so we're we're between Baron Sorrell, and then you've got one or two guys you want to make a case for. I'm going to pull up Sorrell's stat line just so we can compare apples to apples here. He's probably one that I've of the five that I've mentioned. He's probably the one I feel least strongly about. So I'm I'm good to compromise on this with you. Um, well, here's my deal on on downs. I don't have another Oklahoma player on the list. That's fair. I don't I don't think I have a single OU guy. Uh, maybe a couple that are like in the discussion. So I'm actually fine with that because we will get roasted if we don't have anybody from OU on here. Yeah. So let's go Ethan Downs. Yeah. Good call. All right, linebacker Jalen Ford. Yes. Okay. When do you want to say defensive player of the year? Do you want to do it when we when we come across them, or do you want to do it at the end? Oh, uh, we can do it at the end. Okay. Foreshadowing. Yeah, but yeah, I have Jalen Ford too for that. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to find. Okay. So I, this was actually tough. So I had. I had Jalen Ford. The next two I feel good about. The fourth guy I had on my list was like right there. So I'll just read you what I have. I've got Jason Johnson from UCF. Last year, 126 tackles as a transfer from Eastern Illinois. So a guy who's used the portal to move up a level. Uh, really experienced player. I think this is his fifth year. First team All-American Athletic Conference last year. Hard to ignore that stat line, 126 tackles and and the experience there. Um, another guy I had was Kendall Daniels from Oklahoma State. I think he was actually the freshman All-American in 2021. Took a little bit of a step back last year, but really flashed. 2022. So he was all fresh. He was freshman Big 12 player of the year last year. Okay. And I have him at safety. Mm, okay. <laughs> um, It's one of those – Linebacker safety roles, though. Yeah. Yeah, this is tough. Who did you have at linebacker? I guess let's let's go there. Uh, linebacker I have – the other two I had were Johnny Hodges at TCU, and then I had Colin Oliver. But I am – I am down with the UCF guy because I also looked at him. Okay. The guy that I – if we're going to move Kendall Daniels to safety, the guy that would have slotted in third for me is Max Tooley from BYU. Um, he's battled injuries, so his total stat line isn't doesn't quite compare to some of these other guys. But let me read you what he does have. Because I think, like, if you imagine him being healthy for 10 or 12 games, what he might be able to do. Uh, this is another guy taking advantage of a COVID year. So this will be his sixth season of college football. He has, in his career, 219 tackles, 12 and a half for loss, two sacks, six interceptions, two of which he returned for a touchdown. He's got six passes defended, a fumble recovery, a forced fumble, and last season's stat line. He had three picks in just seven games. And so he's a linebacker that apparently does well in coverage, but also, I mean, eats his fair share of tackles. So I had him right on the cusp. I It was hard for me to not include him in the three. But if we're moving Kendall Daniels to safety, he would have been my next one as an all-Big 12 linebacker. Johnny Hodges not on your list? No, I do not have Johnny Hodges. Newcomer of the year last year, 87 tackles. Second team all Big 12 last year. Yeah. He probably deserves a spot. So you want to go I'll I'll take Hodges if you want to take the third. 
Or do you feel strongly about uh, the UCF linebacker? Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to balance, you know, being fair to the newcomers while also respecting guys that have already produced at this level. Which I, which I guess I'm down to a UCF and a BYU guy. Um, the the only other guy I had kind of close to that conversation was Lee Koba from West Virginia in terms of a returning Big 12 player, but he was he was behind Max Tooley and Jason Johnson for me. So I I guess I'll go with Jason Johnson because that's who I had initially. But I can I can be talked out of it if you prefer Max Tooley from BYU. And then Johnny Hodges. Yeah. Read uh read the BYU linebacker stat again. Yeah, so let me pull that up. So last season in seven games, 57 tackles, two for loss, one sack, three INTs, two of those returned for a touchdown. And then his career, which is let's see here, quick math, 35, 40 ish games, 40, 45 games. He has 219 tackles, 12 and a half for loss, two sacks, six INTs. Fumble recovery, forced fumble, two passes defended. All right, comment section, UCF linebacker or BYU linebacker? I think I'm leaning BYU, though. Okay. Well, you're leaning UCF? I, I was initially, but I, I think if, if this guy had been healthy for 12 games, he probably would have been up there. Okay. And what was his name? His name is... Max Tooley, T-O-O-L-E-Y. I would not have spelled it like that. Yeah. We got a we got a UCF edge rusher, so yeah. This is close though. I mean, I'm putting the other guy in my honorable mention list. I mean, he was right there. That's no no disrespect to UCF. Yeah, we've left off a lot of good players already, obviously. Yeah, and we're about to have to leave off some really good DBs. I'll, I'll say this. So I forgot to mention this at the outset of the defense. I think pass rushers have a huge opportunity to shake up this list. Like you lost pretty much all your marquee pass rushers from last year. Like some of the best guys coming back had five sacks last year, which is pretty good, but that's not NUDK Uzama or Tyree Wilson type production. So there could be a guy totally not on anybody's radar that has 10 sacks this year and is like immediately first team all big 12 um, defensive back, I feel the exact opposite. I feel like it's loaded. I could put eight guys as all Big 12 on this list, but we can only pick five. And one of them apparently plays kind of a hybrid position. I thought he was a linebacker. So we've already got one off the board who was on my linebackers list. And I had I had six DBs, and I was not sure which one to cut, and he wasn't even on that list. So this is going to be tough. Okay, how do you want to go about this? Do you want me to just start naming the guys I have, and then we can kind of check the ones we both have? Do you want to go first? I've got, I've got two guys. I've got three guys that I think absolutely have to be on there. So All I'll right. start with those three and see what you think about those. Okay. I've got Kobe Savage from Kansas State. Yes. I've got Bud Clark from TCU. And I've got Kobe Bryant, C-O-B-E-E -E Bryant from Kansas. All right. I have both the Kobe's. Kobe Savage from the front. Bud Clark, I think, is the returning interceptions leader from last season. He had 45 tackles, five INTs, and five passes defended. The two Kobe's had three interceptions apiece, just for comparison. So my final two are Malik Dunlap and Aubrey Burks. I have both of them down, along with TJ Tampa from Iowa State. And those were the ones that it was like splitting hairs for me. Yeah, TJ Tampa was definitely on my list. And, and Rayshad Williams, honestly, is not – I think Malik Dunlap is considered the better corner in Lubbock, but production-wise, Rashad Williams is not far off at all. Man. Are you comfortable locking in Bud Clark from TCU? I feel like that's that's got to be pretty automatic. Five INTs last year. 
Western either? No. So we're down to one. Okay. So, so do, do you want me to read you stats real quick? Because I've, I've got the same guys. I've got their stat lines all pulled up. Okay. This is from last season only. Malik Dunlap, 33 tackles, one INT, 12 passes defended. TJ Tampa, 39 tackles, one INT, nine passes defended. Aubrey Burks, 66 tackles, one INT, two passes defended. And then if you want to consider Rayshad Williams, 37 tackles, one INT, seven passes defended. I just feel like there's a lot of safeties on the list and you need a corner. And I would lean Malik Dunlap. I think I would too. I'm I'm trying hard not to be biased here. Aubrey Burks, like you're saying, great safety, the best tackler on this list. Um, and TJ Tampa, I, I thought – I'd, like before I started looking up stats from last year and everything, I thought TJ Tampa was going to be like a slam dunk. But last year he had 75% of the passes defended that Malik Dunlap had. So I, I think it's a justifiable – people are people might say, oh, that's a homer pick, y'all are Tech fans, but I think that the stats actually back that up. And it doesn't mean TJ Tampa isn't really good. He is, like I said at the outset with Tony Bradford, there's some really good players that aren't going to make this list. So I, I'm, I'm comfortable with Dunlap if you are. I am. All right, punter. We going another uh, another over pick here? Austin All right. McNamara. All right. I mean, he. I think his freshman or sophomore year set the conference record for punt average. It was a freshman All-American. It's his fifth season. I mean, I'm open to discussion if somebody thinks there's a better punter out there, but I, I don't think there is. And then you you were also in a in in uh, the simpatico mindset that Jalen Ford's the defensive player of the year. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and lock that in too. Yeah, I didn't really have anybody else, honestly, even on the list. It was a, a couple of these, and on offense, I'm going to have you help me decide. Like for quarterback, there's only one slot. Running back, there's only two. Um, I had a list of multiple guys. Defensive player of the year is just Jalen Ford. 